in the name of Allah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We do not have equal talent, but we have equal opportunity to develop our talent. Well, I am Sheikh Sadaf from Adura Mawar. Presently, I am the student of Alpha Classes Sandwara. Today, I am going to talk about semiconductors. What are semiconductors? Before starting the semiconductors, let me introduce you people with the conductors and insulators. What are conductors? Conductors are the materials which conduct electricity or which have conductivity. They have conductivity because of the presence of free electrons or free charge carriers in them. Conductors have free charge carriers in them so they can conduct electricity and they have zero energy gap between valence band and conduction band or they overlap each other valence band and conduction band in case of semiconductors uh, overlap each other and they have a presence of free electrons or free charge carriers in them so the conductors can conduct electricity. Now what are insulators? Insulators are those materials which do not conduct electricity or they do not have uh, electrical conductivity uh, so uh, because they have no uh, presence of uh, free electrons or free charge carriers that's why they do not conduct electricity and they have large energy difference between valence band and conduction band and that above it 15 electron volt. They have large energy gap between valence band and conduction band of about 15 electron volt. So they cannot conduct electricity because of large energy gap between conduction band and uh, valence band. If we will supply the energy to these insulators, they still are not able to. Uh, they still are not able to conduct the electricity because of the large energy gap. Now what are these uh, semiconductors? Semiconductors are the materials which are in between conductors and insulators. Conductors can conduct LST and insulators do not and the semiconductors are those materials which have intermediate conductivity between the conductors and insulators. They have intermediate energy gap between conductors and insulators between valence band and conduction band of about 1 electron volt. They have little energy gap between valence band and conduction band uh, at uh, room temperature they behave as insulators but if we'll, we will supply a little amount of energy to them the electrons from valence band will excite the conduction band and uh, they can conduct the electricity. So we can define the semiconductors as the materials which have conductivity in between conductors and insulators. For example, semiconductors ke example hai silicon ya germanium etc. So we can define the semiconductors as the materials which have conductivity in between the conductors and insulators. Now many of you people would have been thinking uh, what is the need of these semiconductors. If we have to conduct electricity, uh, we have conductors. If we do not have to conduct electricity, we have uh, insulators. Now what is the need of these semiconductors? Uh, because uh, semiconductors have um, great advantage, they have a lot of uh, importance uh, in our life. Uh, but because of two main reasons, these semiconductors uh, are being selected. Because these semiconductors, by these semiconductors, we can get a unidirectional current. And by these semiconductors, we can get a, a controlled amount of charge carriers. So we can get a controlled amount of conductivity by these semiconductors and we can get a controlled um, unidirectional current by these semiconductors. Besides this, uh, vacuum tubes, uh, by vacuum tubes we can also get a controlled amount of uh, electric uh, current or um, charge carriers and a unidirectional current uh, um, but we are not using uh, 
vacuum tubes nowadays because the vacuum tubes are bulky in size they have a huge size and um, the uh, vacuum tubes involves the energy loss uh, by um, we can get a unidirectional current by um, vacuum tubes but they involve a lot of energy loss jab um, hame unidirectional current chahiye hota hai vacuum tube se lekin wo zyada energy loss involve hota hai usme jab hame controlling amount of electric current chahiye hota hai to hame voltage vary karni padti hai usse zyada energy loss hota hai aur ye vacuum tubes hote hain unka lifetime bahut kam hota hai लाइफ टाइम बहुत ज्यादा कम होता है एंड दे आर बल्की इन साइज बिकॉज ऑफ दीज रीजन वी डू नॉट यूज दीज वैक्यूम ट्यूबस एंड इन नाइनटीन थर्टीज वी डिस्कवर दीज सेमी कंडक्टर्स वी डिस्कवर दीज सेमी कंडक्टर्स नाउ दीज सेमी कंडक्टर्स आर ऑफ टू टाइप वन इज कॉल्ड एक्स इंट्रेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर्स एंड सेकेंड एक्सट्रेंसिक What are intrinsic semiconductors? Intrinsic semiconductors are those semiconductors we can say they are pure semiconductors in which we do not have to add any impurity. We have not added any impurity in them. Uh, they are called sem pure semiconductors. For example, silicon. These uh, semiconductors are trivalent. Silicon. this is a semiconductor in this semiconductor we have not added any impurity in this semiconductor uh, silicon is a tetravalent uh, silicon has formed the bond with other four atoms of same atoms uh, that is silicon atom so it's an extrinsic semiconductor uh, if we will supply heat to this semiconductor and uh, one bond from this silicon atom will break and electron gets free and a hole is created this electron and hole these two are now responsible for this conduction now this hole and one electron is responsible for the uh, conduction in this we have not added any impurity so we call it as a intrinsic semiconductor and this in this number of holes is equal to the number of electrons for example if there are 5 into 10 to the power 5 um, electrons and there are 5 into 10 to the power 5 holes if we will uh, multiply them we get 25 into 10 to the power 5 that is we get n i square so we can say n h into n e is equal to n i square by this we can calculate the number of holes and number of electrons in this formula is valid to the extrinsic semiconductors as well so what are intrinsic semiconductors intrinsic semiconductors are those semiconductors uh, which do not involve any adding of any impurity or um, uh, do parts now what are extrinsic semiconductors so, extrinsic semiconductors are those semiconductors in which we have added uh, some impurities uh, like aluminum arsenic etc in this kind of semiconductors we are adding some dopants or some impurities uh, so to increase its efficiency and the whole process of adding some impurity is called as dop uh, doping the doping involves uh, the doping involves the adding up of impurities or um, impurities uh, to increase its conductivity or to increase the efficiency of this semiconductor now these extrinsic semiconductors are of two types n type and p type now what are these n type and p type semiconductors if we will add a pure semiconductor uh, to a pentavalent impurity 
that is uh, this is a intrinsic semiconductor or we can say it is a pure semiconductor if we will add some pentavalent impurity uh, to this semiconductor crystal that is if we will add arsenic which is a pentavalent this will form four bonds with these four silicon atoms and one electron is left unbonded this one electron is now responsible for the conduction of electricity or we can say this is responsible for uh, conduction in this p uh, extrinsic semiconductor or n type semiconductor we do not have to uh, supply energy or supply heat the uh, electron is generated by its own we can say in this uh, semiconductor number of holes is less than number of electrons number of holes is less than number of electrons this uh, arsenic is giving a free one free electron so this arsenic is known as donor impurity donor impurity in uh, n type semiconductors we add a pentavalent impurity which uh, donates one electron for the conduction of electricity and that uh, and the uh, element which donates the electron free electron for the conduction is known as donor impurity and this semiconductor format is known as n type semiconductor now what is p type semiconductor now if i will add a trivalent impurity to this pure semiconductor aluminum is a trivalent it will bond up with three silicon atoms and one hole is left now this hole is for responsible for charge uh, conduction in this type number of holes is greater than number of electrons so now another silicon atom will give this uh, give one electron to this hole and will fill up with um, this the aluminum is accepting an electron from other silicon atoms so the aluminum is known as acceptor impurity mm. so p type impurity is the uh, p type semiconductors are the semiconductors it in which we add up a trivalent impurity and hole is left for the charge conduction now why is it called n type impurity because in this uh, impurity in this type of semiconductor we add up a, a pentavalent impurity one electron is left so the overall negative charge in is uh, is greater so the negative uh, n stands for negative and n is overall um, greater charge is negative charge so we can say it is a n type semiconductor why is it p type because uh, holes have positive charge and overall it is a uh, large is positive charge in this semiconductor so it is called the p type semiconductor so we have studied about the semiconductors that is semiconductors are the semiconductors are the materials which have conductivity in between the conductors and insulators now what is the use of these semiconductors why are using we these semiconductors because uh, they can get a controlled amount of conductivity or a controlled amount of charge carriers and they can get us a we can give a we can get a um, unidirectional current now they are of two types intrinsic and extrinsic intrinsic semiconductors are those semiconductors in which we do not add up any uh, impurity uh, in which we do not add up any impurity and extrinsic semiconductors are those semiconductors in which we add some impurities and extrinsic uh, semiconductors are of two types n type and p type n type semiconductors in which we add up a pentavalent impurity and that's also called a donor impurity and in p type we add up a trivalent impurity also called as acceptor impurity so thanks hope you guys have enjoyed this little session and have understood everything i have said to you thanks